Well, hello there. I didn't see you come in. Make yourself at home. Have a drink. While I give some attention to some underappreciated characters and storylines that I personally love. And I hope you grow to love as well. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Matt's Minis. Today, we are doing the second issue, the conclusion, part two of last week. So, <laughs> this is uh, the conclusion of that doppelganger story. It's issue number 20 of the January 1976 issue of Swamp Thing. Um, and we see on the cover, first things first, uh, we got Swamp Thing and the doppelganger are fighting each other in the swamp at night. Giant moon behind them. Uh, it's very dramatic. And uh, it looks like the doppelganger has the upper hand because he is about to force Swamp Thing backwards into the swamp. So, uh-oh, what's going to happen? Uh, <laughs> what we see on the first page here, we pretty much leave just like uh, the last issue left off where uh, Hotep, the Native American man, is showing uh, the boy Junior, the white boy Junior, his, uh, his grotto of eternal youth. And the doppelganger swamp thing is with them. And uh, the boy's like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. And then the Native American man's like, oh, basically I'm like 180 years old and uh, you're the first white person to see <laughs> see this fountain. It's pretty awesome. And the boy's like, why, how could you be 180 years old? That's crazy. And uh, Hota is like, you might even say I'm a mortal, Junior. <laughs> and then he goes uh, and basically he's going to tell his story of like his origin and um he says you know basically he found this when he was a young man and uh he drank from it like right when he found it and he got sick and so he went back to his village and and he says and that was the first day i ever encountered the white man so uh then we see on the next page his village starts getting attacked all of a sudden by uh, 10 white traders, it says. And this is they were drunk on whiskey. And they were charging through the village on horseback, firing their muskets and handguns, killing men, women, and, ch women and children alike, including his mother and father. So Hotza's mom and dad, when they heard all the commotion, ran outside and got shot. So, and then he says, you know, somehow he escaped, but he was the only one of his tribe who survived the massacre. So, um... And he, he's like, I don't know why I was left alive, but perhaps he was left alive so that he could keep the memory of his people alive for these last 200 years. And then um, <laughs> as he's do saying this, the doppelganger swamp thing is like touched by the story. And I guess he feels bad for the for Hota. And so uh, he puts his hand on here. He reaches out to put his hand on uh, the Native American shoulder and um and the Native American's like, well, my story seems to have touched our friend here. And then Junior's like, you know what? I'm really sorry about what those men did. I really am. And he's like, well, it's kind of like what those those men are doing to this monster. He keeps calling him the monster. I don't know why. I guess they don't know what else to call him. But um, And it's not anything like what the men are doing to the monster. But Junior, he's making connection all, connections all over the place. So, uh <laughs> Yeah, uh, basically they're saying like, yeah, these uh, white men are tra trying to get him because they don't understand him either. Um, so then uh, we cut to the real Swamp Thing, and he is walking, and he's like, I still feel that impulse pulling at me like invisible fingers. How odd the pull keeps getting stronger since I woke this morning. And uh, so he's like, he just like, I'm going to follow this thing until, uh, you know, I get there because whoever's meddling with me and like uh, making me come their way are going to get a big surprise. And then he's like walking and he walks out of the swamp and there just happens to be a road. <laughs> and that biker gang that was in the diner from last issue uh, is driving down the road and they see Swamp Thing. And uh, the leader, his name's Earl Hobart, is like, what the, heck, what the heck is that thing? Mother of mercy. It's some kind of monster. And he like, he like slams on the brakes and they all fall off their motorcycles. And then, uh, he, he orders the other motorcycle members to, uh, to get him to get swamp thing. And so, uh, they start attacking swamp thing and then, uh, you know, they're throwing their bike chains and a couple of them have switch blades. One of them's got a wrench and they're attacking him and and one of them cuts into Swamp Thing's arm, and he's like, ah, one of them's cutting my back. 
just because my plant body can't feel doesn't mean I'll let this creep use me for a pincushion. So <laughs> he grabs this dude by the hair. And <laughs> from behind himself, he pulls him off the guy off his back by the hair and then throws him head down onto the asphalt. I assume that gentleman is dead. <laughs> and uh and then you know he's got a knife sticking out of him and then he's like well luckily uh i can't really be hurt and he pulls the knife out and he's like you know luckily my body regenerates it's kind of like that one time my arm got cut off and it says like oh make sure you read swamp thing number three uh and then he's like it's it's a weird thing like i gotta keep thinking about that so he's he's thinking about how his uh how he's able to regenerate and maybe something with his arm is happening or whatnot. So I don't know how he's coming to that conclusion, but Swamp Thing, he can figure shit out apparently. So um, I guess from murdering their friend, (laughs) all the other bikers run away and they're like, oh my God, we got to get the hell out of here. Who cares what Earl says? (laughs) So they ride off and Earl rides off too. And then uh, Swamp Thing, I guess, goes across the street and uh, goes back to the other side of the swamp that the street divided and he's walking through the water and he's like that's that impulse is stronger than ever i have to keep following it i have to and then we cut to the construction site uh where the construct contractors are building a uh government i don't know site or some some kind of s- secret government facility or something so um matt cable and bolts are talking to the foreman and the foreman's like, wait, let me get this straight, Matt. You're a government agent who's not working on a case, and you're not officially here. So what's going on with this uh, swamp monster you're chasing, and why can't we kill it? <laughs> and Matt's like, no, don't just listen to me, all right? It's like he's trying to explain uh, you know, what's going on to this guy. And then the best thing ever is then while Matt's talking, Bolt just goes thinks, thinks, starts thinking in his mind, uh you know about how um he says uh the government building is a secret secret defense installation and uh you know they apparently they've promised the the contractors that they'll protect them from swamp thing um and and then he starts thinking about how swamp things like so sad about his uh you know construct or about his situation um that like he understands like why this guy would want to die, like why Swamp Thing would really want to die and not be alive anymore, and he can understand that, and you know, why why don't we just let him after all, and he says, what's the poor jerk got to live for, maybe that's why he went little crackers yesterday, so um, yeah, uh, he just, he's fine with Swamp Thing killing himself apparently, you know, he's, he's one of those, uh, hey, if you want to die, that, that's your own thing, so then uh, his thoughts are interrupted by another worker who's like, hey, uh, Mr. Halston, who's the foreman, uh, we got a big boulder here that we can't push with the uh, tractor. So what do you want us to do with it? And the foreman's like, eh, just blow it up. <laughs> just blow it up with some explosives. And um, Matt Cable's like, hey, are you sure that's okay to do? And the foreman's like, hey, do I go to your job and tell you what to do? So uh the guy that asked the question was like all right i'll blow it up so he gets some explosives blows it up and uh the foreman's like what what does it matter anyway these just fall down into the swamp these rocks will just you know go into the water who cares and then we cut to (laughs) below that cliff we cut we cut to the native american junior and doppelganger swamp thing and they're standing there at the grotto and then all of a sudden kabloom and the cliff is exploding and then we cut to um the bikers at the diner telling um sloan the diner owner like that they saw a monster and uh and abby arcane's like oh my god they're talking about alec and then that they hear a giant kaboom and then we cut to swamp thing walking and he's like oh man those bikers it's got me thinking about my arm if maybe if I can regenerate, like when I get hurt, maybe my arm or my parts can regenerate. And then before he has time to like finish that, that thought, the explosion happens. And so then, then we cut to the, uh, 
Ota and Junior and the doppelganger, and they're standing in front of the Garado of Eternal Youth. And it is being crushed by all the rocks and falling debris from that explosion. <laughs> and that is it. The Native American is looking at this uh, this uh, horrible thing that has happened to his fountain of eternal youth. And he says, the white man did this. The cursed white man destroyed the my world, my life. He has destroyed my, the life of my father. He has destroyed my race. And so uh, he yells to this doppelganger swamp thing. He must die. He must die. Seek the white man out, my child. Seek him out and kill him. So even though he's not really controlling the doppelganger, I guess the doppelganger's like, all right, bro, you saved me in the last issue. I'll go kill a bunch of people. So (laughs) he uh, starts walking up that cliff and climbing, and he gets to the top of it, and he sees the gentleman that put the dynamite uh, on the boulder, and he pulls him by his foot, and the guy's like, "Why, mother of mercy!" As he sees what's grabbing him, and and the doppelganger swamp thing just throws him off the cliff. So that dude's dead. And then um, Matt Cable's like, "What? Good lord! Did you see that? Alec just tossed the man like a sack of wheat." Uh, and then he tries to go over to like calm Swamp Thing down, like, "You know, that's that's murder. You can't do that." And uh, and Swamp Thing just slaps the shit out of Matt Cable and Bolt yells out, Cable! As he runs to his aid and he's like, man, he didn't even hesitate. Are you okay? And then Matt Cable's like, did you see his eyes, Bolt? His eyes. And <laughs> it's because he's got, the doppelganger has yellow eyes as opposed to Swamp Thing's red eyes. So apparently it's very obvious to them. And uh, so they, the doppelganger just keeps walking uh away i don't know why he doesn't continue to fight the other construction workers but he does not uh he does not kill matt and he doesn't kill bolt or the foreman so he just walks past them after he slapped matt cable and then he walks into the swamp and he just happens to run into swamp thing who was running that way as well so he finally they finally run into each other he sees it and swamp thing thinks you and then he says my exact double and right away before anything happens uh, or like before Swamp Thing, the real Swamp Thing can do anything, the doppelganger just jumps right on top of him and uh, starts fighting with him. So <laughs> he pushes Swamp Thing into the water and he's choking him. I mean, I don't. I guess he doesn't know that you can't choke Swamp Thing or drown him or whatever. So, <laughs> so and then the real Swamp Thing's like, like uh, I have to think through this because unless I'm mistaken, we're both a match for each other. And this is going to be a stalemate that could go on forever. So then we cut to uh, Hota and a Junior are, have now walked back to town. And Hota is fucking pissed. <laughs> he runs back to the diner um, where the biker gang and uh, Junior's dad is and Abby Arcane. And he's he's yelling at them. He's like, white devils, you will pay for your persecution. You will pay. And they're like, what? What is this guy yelling about? What's going on? And, of course, the uh, the biker's, like, super racist. He's like, uh, what's this about you making folks pay Redskin? And then the Junior's dad's like, Junior, what are you doing with this crazy Indian? And actually, he says Indian, which is, I guess, even worse. Um, and then uh, <laughs> uh, Ota is like, mock me, white devil. It makes no difference now. The monster will destroy you, all of you. So he's like, man, yeah, the monster, Swamp Thing's doppelganger is going to come and murder all these folks too. And so before before anything else happens, Junior's dad comes over and starts hitting the fuck out of Junior. He smacks the shit out of him, and he's like, I warned you about seeing him, boy. I warned you. And uh, Abby's like, no, slow, no. And uh, the Native American is like, uh, let that that boy go, and he starts like wrestling with the uh, biker who kind of attacks him first, and he takes a swing at the biker, and then it says, uh, frustrated and enraged, Burton Sloan, who's Junior's dad, looks elsewhere to vent his fury. I guess now that his son is knocked out, or <laughs> like he's beat him enough, fury which is directed more at himself than at any tangible object. So then uh, it says Burton Sloan is one of the mo- those pathetic men, the father who cannot admit the 
in the independence of his son. And so he blindlessly strikes out at the nearest scapegoat. And it's, he just pushes Ota down. And as Ota falls down, he smashes his skull against the curb. And he dies. Earl the biker uh, kneels down and verifies. He's like, you killed him. He's dead. And Abby Arcane is, of course, like freaking out. She's like, oh, my God. And Junior's like, dead? And then we cut back to the Swamp Things, and they are still fighting. I imagine this is the longest fight, uh, you know, of all time. If this was ever made into a movie, it'd be like They Live or something. <laughs> and the doppelganger seems to be winning for the most part. He's he's punching Swamp Thing, and Swamp Thing's falling down. And then um, <laughs> Swamp Thing actually says, as he grabs a branch and swing, you know, like a I guess it was like a dead tree, and swings it at the doppelganger. He's like. We've been at this for, for, we've been at this straight for almost half an hour as it is. Like this can't go on forever. I won't be able to hold myself up. And so he knows, you know, what's going uh can't go on forever cuz they're both just, you know, invincible and they have each other's same strength. So um then uh he swings the tree uh, branch again and it says he thinks to himself this next blow has got to be the last. And then now they've, I guess they fought themselves across the swamp from the construction site to town because they are now at the town and the doppelganger falls into the street as he gets hit uh, by the tree. He looks over at the uh, people at the diner and they're staring at something on the ground and he notices, oh my gosh, it's the, uh, it's the Native American man, Otep. And it's like, you know, it's his friend. So he goes to walk over there. And then right as he's walking up to Ota's body on the ground, he's all sad and everything. He kneels down to, like, um, see if he's okay. And a jeep pulls up, and it's got the foreman from the construction site and Matt Cable and Bolt. And uh, Matt Cable's like, uh, I don't know, if, like, what you're planning on doing. And then the foreman's like, good thing I had you boys drive me down here. We've got to destroy that creature. And so... Uh, basically he just, I guess he had some dynamite on him and he says, I'm an engineer bolt. I know explosives better than anyone. Get out of my way and duck. And he throws a bomb or I don't know, a piece of dynamite or something at the doppelganger who was leaning over, uh, uh, you know, Otep's body and it blows up. It, I mean, it land, I guess it lands right where he was aiming and it, it blows the doppelganger and Oto's body up which is super fucked up and then so there's not even a body to charge that guy with so uh then uh abby arcane's like matt he's dead alec holland is dead no one cares about Oto for some reason um but yeah they think that that was swamp thing they had never seen both of them together at the same time so they think Swamp Thing was like yellow-eyed and crazy for some reason and that he just got blown up uh, with, you know, Ota. So, um, and then Swamp Thing is like the real Swamp Thing. He's like, well, that kind of worked out for me because I don't want them to bother me anymore. <laughs> so they think I'm dead. I'm just going to walk into the swamp again and not have to deal with, uh, you know, Matt Cable and Bolt anymore. So uh, he can go sulk in the swamp like always. So uh, that's it for this issue. If you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, feel free to email me at planes, trains, and comic books, all one word at gmail.com. And until next time, stay swampy. Stay swampy.